Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math, where we will master math one video at a time. Our lesson today is on how to multiply integers. Our objectives today are that you will just do that, multiply integers, and then we're going to take what we know and learn about the rules of multiplying integers and apply it to evaluate powers with negative bases. The question I would like you thinking about today as I proceed through the lesson is how do you know if a product is positive, negative, or zero? Keeping in mind that product is the answer when you multiply. So in previous lessons, when we've learned to add, we've discussed whether or not your sum will be positive, negative, or zero. And today, I want you thinking about your product. Before you multiply, think, will your product be positive, negative, or zero? Let's review some multiplication properties that could make your multiplying easier for you. So as this should be review, multiplication property of zero states that any value multiplied by zero will have a product of zero. Algebraically, it looks like this. Any value a multiplied by zero equals zero. Some numerical examples, four multiplied by zero equals zero and negative four multiplied by zero equals zero. So simply stated, any value multiplied by zero has a product of zero. Another property that comes in handy is the identity property of multiplication, which states that any value multiplied by one will be equal to itself. Algebraically, it looks like this. Any value a multiplied by one will have a product of a. Here's some numerical examples. Four multiplied by one is equal to four. Negative four multiplied by one is equal to negative four. Now we're gonna learn our first rule. Our first rule is multiplying integers that have the same sign. It states our rule that the product of two integers with the same sign is always positive. So we have this math fact that you've seen before, three multiplied by two is positive six. Negative three multiplied by negative two is also positive six. Notice that the factors three and two are both positive. Here, the factors three and two are both negative and they both have a product of six. So our rule states that a positive multiplied by a positive equals a positive, and a negative multiplied by a negative also equals a positive. So you can identify that when you look at the multiplication fact, if both integers have the same value, then you know your product will be positive. Your turn. I would like you to pause here, find the product of each, and come back to check your work. Welcome back. Hopefully you got these solutions. Positive four multiplied by positive seven is a positive 28. Both integers are positive. That results in, in a product that is positive. So this one is two negative values and I'm gonna think before I multiply. They have the same sign, therefore I know my product will be positive and I just need to multiply their absolute values. Three times three is nine. Now let's talk about our second rule, our last rule, multiplying integers with different signs. The rule states that the product of two integers with different signs is always negative. So here's an example. We have negative three multiplied by positive two, two different signs, a negative and a positive. I multiply, three times two is six, and because they had different signs, my product is negative. 3 times negative 2, two different signs, positive and negative. I multiply and my product is negative. 3 times 2 is 6. So our rule states that a negative multiplied by a positive will be negative because they're different. A positive multiplied by a negative is also negative because they're different. So you can also think in your mind, or writing in your notebooks, same sign, positive. 
Different signs, negative. Your turn. Please pause, find the products, and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So let's see how you did. Here's our solutions. I have two different signs, so I know my product will be negative, so I just need to multiply the absolute values. 5 times 6 is 30. Different signs means it's negative 30. Here I have two different signs, so I'm just going to multiply the absolute values, and the product will be negative. 9 times 3 is 27, so my product's negative 27. Your turn. Try these. Come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. So I have two different signs, so I know that 12 times 2 is 24, and it's going to be negative 24 because the signs are different. Over here, same sign, so 4 times 9 going to be positive 36. Same sign, positive product. Negative 11 times 1. Any value times 1 is itself, so negative 11 is my product. Over here, I have three numbers being multiplied together, but because one of them is 0, I know that the zero product uh, zero property of multiplication tells me this is going to be zero because even if I did these two first, two times negative four would be negative eight. Negative eight times zero is zero. So because it's repeated multiplication and one of the values is zero, my product will be zero. Now let's talk about exponents. First, we need to understand what this expression represents. The entire expression a to the n, representing an exponential expression, is a power. Typically, I th like to tell kids because it's powerful. It represents a much larger number. The base of this power is a. The n represents the exponent. So again, this entire expression isn't an exponent. It's a power, and the power is made up of a base and an exponent. Now we need to understand how to evaluate a power. So I have this power 4 cubed, or 4 to the third. So my base, that's my power, my base is 4, my exponent is 3. My exponent tells me how many times to repeatedly multiply my base. So when I write this out, we call these repeated factors, and I need three fours, and I'm going to multiply them all. 1, 2, 3. So when I multiply, 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times 4 is 64. So this is my product, and these are my repeated factors, and then you can neatly write it as a power. So when we write using exponents, it makes a much smaller expression if you have the same number being repeatedly multiplied. Now we need to start understanding when our base is a negative value. And it's very difficult to remember this. Students get very confused, but I want to review it with you and point it out, and you'll see it again and again through your math career. So we need to know that our base must be in parentheses if it's a negative number that is being raised to this exponent. So this power is very different than this power. So in this power, my base is negative 2, and my exponent is 2. In this power, my base is just the 2, and my exponent is 2. So my base here is not negative 2. So think of it as this exponent being attached to your base. So this is kind of like there's an invisible 1 here, negative 1 multiplied by 2 squared. Or sometimes students like to think of it as 2 squared and make it negative. So let's break this down. So what this is saying is my base is negative 2 because it's trapped in the parentheses, and I want to multiply it by itself two times. So I need a negative 2 times a negative 2. They have the same sign, so when I multiply, I'm going to get a positive product. 2 times 2 is 4. How this is different is we need to know that we're only using the exponent to the base of positive 2 because there are no parentheses. So this negative sign is not trapped as part of the base. So I'm going to keep my negative sign outside, 
but my repeated factors are positive 2 times positive 2, which is 4, and then I need to make it negative. Again, think of this as a negative 1. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Over here, we have a base that's trapped. Think of it as being trapped. If it's not trapped, then it's a positive base. So this is a negative base of negative 2, and I need 3 negative 2. So when I write it out as repeated factors, it's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Now you have to be very careful when your base is negative. So think about it as anytime it's an odd number, your product's going to be negative. And if it's an even number of negative bases, then you're going to have a positive. So let's prove this. Negative 2 times negative 2, both values are negative, so I know because they have the same sign, it's going to be a positive product. So negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Multiplied by negative 2, I have different signs, and 4 times 2 is 8, so my product is negative 8. So negative 2, in parentheses, cubed, is negative 8. Your turn. See if you can apply these concepts to these three examples. Please pause, come back when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So here are our solutions. I hope you noticed that this negative 5 was the base. It's trapped inside the parentheses. So you would write it as repeated factors of negative 5 times negative 5. There's two of them because the exponent is 2. They both have the same sign, so I know my product will be positive. 5 times 5 is 25. Second one, this negative sign is not trapped in parentheses. So when I write this, it's going to be the negative of 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9, so my product is negative 9. The last one, I have this negative 4 trapped in parentheses, so negative 4 is my base that I'm going to repeatedly multiply three times. Negative 4, negative 4, negative 4, three of them. So I'll start out with the first two. Negative 4 times negative 4, same sign, so it's going to be positive, 16. And then I have one more negative 4. Two different signs, so I'm going to have a negative product, 16 times 4 is 64, and it's negative again because they have different signs. So there you have it. Those are our two rules for multiplying integers and how we apply them to powers or exponents. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned a lot about multiplying integers and that you will subscribe to the channel and sign up for notifications to where you're going to master math one video at a time. Have a great day.